Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bronze. I'm Zinc. And welcome to Bronze Zinc with Gameplay Episode 1. Um, in Gameplay, we're going to be going over Magic the Gathering, kind of getting you familiar with um, how Arena works, as well as just playing some uh, Magic the Gathering for you. Alright, so to start off, um, as your first introduction into Arena, we're just going to kind of quickly, quickly walk over just a few things. So, quite obviously, this is the homepage. Down here we see our daily rewards. Daily rewards are very important. I'd recommend trying to accomplish them because they give you gold. Now what does gold get you? Gold allows you to draft. draft. So drafting is really fun and probably the best part of this game where you get to, you know, draft. And if you haven't drafted before, basically you get a bunch of cards. You get to choose out of those cards a deck that you're going to play against and then you play the deck. It's a pretty simplified version of what a draft is, but uh, there you go. And definitely coming up we will have some draft videos for you, but we're just going to start with the basics. This is the video that's going to go along with our What is MTG? So if you haven't checked out that video, check out that video. It's going to go in more in depth. We're just going to kind of have some fun, play around, and for those visual people out there, show you what we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> let <clears throat> us, let's look at some decks. We're going to look at this guy right here. So, this is a red aggro deck. Um, we'll get into a little bit more later what aggro means, but this is a mono red deck or a red only deck. And this is what we're going to be using to demonstrate a couple properties that we introduced in our What is MTG video. Yeah, so to start off, We've got all of these different permanent types. So creature, planeswalker, instant sorcery, enchantment, artifact, land. Now, creature, planeswalker, enchantment, artifact, land are permanent spells, meaning that once we put them onto the battlefield, they remain there unless interacted with, destroyed, whatnot, sent back to your hand. The other ones, like this shock, which is an instant, and I don't even, oh, I do have a sorcery here, right? The risk factors of sorcery. Skewered the critics. Oh, I skewered the critics. Which is a sorcery. So these ones, like what skewered the critics says, deal three damage to any target. So if our opponent's at 20, we can deal three damage, bring them down to 17, closer to our goal of beating them, um, or three damage to one of the creatures, so on and so forth. But this, as soon as it, it resolves, so we do the 3 damage, it goes into our graveyard. Doesn't stay on the battlefield, doesn't stay active, just has that one activation is done. Unlike, say, G2 Lava Runner, we cast Lava Runner, it stays on the battlefield until it's interacted with. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, this deck is a 60 card deck. Now, 60 card deck is very standard for um, a Magic the Gathering deck. Typically, you'll have anywhere between like 18 to 26 lands in your deck. Now, lands are important because that's what produces mana. Um, and you'll um, get to know why you have certain amounts of land for different decks um, as we go along and as you play more magic. But right now, we don't have a whole lot of high-level, high-mana co cost spells. So we don't need a whole lot of land, so we can have more spells in there. We can have more creatures and more instants and sorceries and stuff. Right. Our goal with this deck, dump our hand as fast as possible and just beat our opponents to the ground before they can get started. Mm -hmm. So really quickly, as we was mentioning, this is a 60-card deck. Now, in Magic the Gathering, in most formats, and we're just going to start uh, with this format, with most formats, you can only have four of any given card. So, in our deck, we have four fanatical firebrands. We can't have five. We can have less than four, but we want all four because we think that they're applicable. Um, like our Goblin Chain Ruler, we chose just to have two. Even though we could have four, we chose just two because we thought that that served its purpose better than, say, having four of them. Mm -hmm. So, as you get into building decks and as you get into kind of looking at high-level decks, you see... Um, these decisions people make, and kind of you just have to go off your own playstyle. Personally, I rather have other cards besides Goblin Chain Whirler, even though Goblin Chain Whirler is generally very good. So it's not that this card is bad or other cards are better. It's just sometimes playstyle and sometimes situational. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the deck uh, or the what deck you're building as to how many of a specific uh, card you'll have in your deck. All right. So as you'll notice, we don't have anything that is a artifact or enchantment or planeswalker, and certainly we'll we'll show you some more of those later on. Um, but right now, we basically just have instant sorcery and creature. 
-hmm. That's what we're, we're looking for. Cheap spells that deal damage. Yep. So we'll introduce you to that by actually playing with this red aggro deck. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right. Play. We will so go. So really quickly, play is just where you're playing against your opponent. The other ones, like practice, is where you're up against the CPU. Um, traditional play, ranked, and traditional ranked, those are all um, other types or styles of gameplay that you can use on Magic the Gathering. Typically on play, you'll find easier opponents because they don't want to risk their kind of janky, maybe bad decks or decks they're trying to get used to in ranked. Because ranked actually gets you rewards, and so if you go for ranked, you'll probably find high level play, which is fine if you're ready for that. If not, play works just fine. Mm -hmm. All of these rewards can be fulfilled in any mode except for practice. Practice or if you're playing um, with one of your friends, if you have one of their, their, their codes and you're playing directly against them, which is up here in direct challenge, that would not get you rewards, will not fulfill these, but everything else will. Yeah. So don't worry, you don't have to play specific sets just to, to fill these. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> so, um, general gameplay, usually you and your opponent will decide who goes first by like high roll on dice is very common. The computer here does it for you, so you don't even have to worry about that. Makes it pretty easy. Um, once gameplay starts, we'll start with seven cards in our hand, we'll look at the cards, we'll decide whether or not we want to mulligan which, if you remember from the previous video, is taking our seven cards, shuffling it back into our library, and drawing a new hand. In this case, um, we did talk about London Mulligan in that video, but this system, because it's still um, using the old system... Because London Mulligan is very new, so this is still using the old mulliganing system where you mulligan down just to six cards. <clears throat> So if you remember from the last video, the London Mulligan was that you would mulligan to seven cards and then you would take one of those cards when you've chosen that hand and put it in the bottom of your library. Well, with before London Mulligan came out, we had this Mulligan where you just mulligan straight to six cards. You don't get to choose one to put on the bottom of your deck. Right. So for right now, if we chose the Mulligan, we'd go down to six. Once 2020, Corsa 2020, which comes out in July, comes out Wizards Will... Um, switch it over to the London Mulligan. So I apologize for those who um, might be a little bit confused by that. Don't worry. So we have the opportunity to play Shock. So each turn we can play one land guard from our hand onto the battlefield. Um, and this produces one red mana. If we look here, we see that it costs one red. Now the reason I'm not using it yet is because I don't want to waste it per se just dealing two straight damage because I can save this destroy one of their creatures or maybe hold it up as a kind of last spell to use against my opponent all right so again each turn I can play one land so now I'm up to three now I can cast things like this they cost three red mana so it works really well in a red base deck because all my mana is red like this one for example you could play in like a red blue a red green something where you have both like two different colors of mana, because the two can be paid for by any color, and the red has to be paid for by red. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to go ahead and cast Shock, target him. And the reason I did that is because I want to be able to do this spectacle cost. Spectacle is an ability, if your opponent has lost life, you may cast it for its spectacle cost. So instead of paying the three, I just get to pay one, which is really nice. Also, Runaway Steamkin's ability is that whenever you cast a red spell, it uh, adds a counter to it. So that's why it's Correct. moving so up. It's increasing its power and toughness. Now, normally, when you cast a, a spell, a creature spell, it has what's known as summoning sickness. Now, this has the ability to have what's called haste. Haste basically negates summoning sickness. Summoning sickness, pretty much um, all it does is like a creature that has entered the battlefield this turn can't attack or use any tap abilities if it has them. And we'll show those to you in just a, once we find one with an attack ability. So you see this like pulsing black wave? That means that it's summoning sick. And how it's gone away? Now it, I am able to attack with that creature. Or if it had tap abilities, I could use those tap abilities. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cast Pyromancer. And again, just to reiterate, see how it has the black pulsing circle? 
the waves coming out. I won't be able to attack with that this turn, but next turn I will. Mm -hmm. So his ability is not a tap ability, it's a when he enters the battlefield ability. So that's why Correct. it happened immediately. <clears throat> I apologize for moving a bit fast. Um, we are in a gameplay. So. We are in a gameplay and we're trying to not get clocked. Because if you wait too long, then you start um, a clock. And then you automatically pass a turn if you go past your clock. So then he scoops. Couldn't have, didn't have any answers. That's kind of that was the aggro plan. You see, how he didn't play anything. Well, he played a, a little bit, but not enough to really slow us down. So that's our goal. We're trying to go as fast as we can and just beat our opponents to the ground before they can pick up steam. And that's what we managed to do there. Yeah. So that was really quick. We'll probably play a couple more and just go over a few more different things um, as we as they come up in our in our battles here. Mm -hmm. Just the. Uh, Familiar with what gameplay looks like and what uh, happens when you face different decks because there are some decks that do have Answers for aggro and then it makes it a really hard uh, Match to win. Yep. 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 Ooh, that looks like a nice hand. So this is a nice hand. And so you see how it has this tap symbol right here Now because it has haste it is able to use its tap ability now if it didn't have haste It wouldn't be able to use that until my next turn So I'm gonna go ahead and keep because I've got two land which for an aggro deck is generally enough. So you see how everything costs two or, or, less. or less. That means that no matter if I don't draw any more land, I'll be able to cast these, which is good. So I'm gonna play my land for a turn. I'm gonna play my firebrand. Now because it has haste, I am able to attack with it, which I will choose to do. And that's part of this aggro deck. The reason that he's in here is because he has haste. Yep, yep, so fanatical firebrand, it's decent. Um, you can sacrifice it. Basically, it means that you just remove it from the battlefield once it's there um, and put it in your graveyard, and then you can use his ability. I'm going to go ahead and cast yeah, Runaway Steamkin. And the reason I'm choosing to do this rather than maybe shocking the vampire or casting Fanatical Firebrand and then shocking the vampire is because each time I play a red spell, I get to put a counter on him. So I want to kind of save these. So I can use these spells to pump him up. Mm -hmm. The other ability that Runaway Steamkin has is that when he has counters on him, when he has three counters, then he can release those counters per se, and he can convert them into mana. Right. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to hope, hopefully I draw a land. That's what that I'm hoping be really for. Because nice. then I can cast this, this. And because Screw the Critics has a spectacle cost, if I manage to do damage to him, then I can just like nice. that. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to shock our opponent. Shocking. Yeah. yeah, so we can cast our spectacle because our opponent's lost life. And then this gets a counter. And then we're going to go ahead and cast Firebrand. Okay. And then what we're going to do is because this has lifelink, now lifelink kind of describes it right there. Damage double this creature or spell with lifelink also causes it to gain its control to gain that much life. And because we're on a fast clock, we really don't want our opponent to be gaining any life. So we're actually going to go ahead and just destroy that. So we use its ability, sacrifice it, and deal one damage to any target. We chose that one because it had one defense, which is that second number, first number's attack, because it had one defense toughness, I should say, it, we were able to kill it. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and kill this one too, yeah. because he's going to be able to block with this. Yep. Now, each Tom Matt, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go out to attack, and he doesn't have any creatures, so he can't block. You can never attack a creature directly, you can only ever attack people, well, your opponent. And your opponent can use any of their creatures to block. So we didn't want our opponent <clears throat> to say block with with the uh, the Sky Marcher and be able to prevent the four damage to him. There you go. That's the power of aggro. Again. Now you notice some of these spells being instants and some of them being sorceries. The main difference is that instants can be cast even during your opponent's turn or like during an attack step or practically any time. Sorceries can only be cast in the, the main phase right before combat and the main phase right after combat. Mm -hmm. 
So it makes it interesting because you need to uh, decide when you want to use those sorcery cards because they're a lot harder to use than instants because instants can literally be used at basically any time. Right, so maybe we'll find an <coughs> opponent who uh, can teach us about blocking better. I kind of destroyed that that image for you by taking care of all of the uh, little minions he had running around. That's okay, because I mean, that's what you want to do, right? And that's how you want to play it. You want to play smart, you want to play to win. Right, so I had to make a decision. I could either attack with all of my creatures, and he would have still blocked and still lost creatures, or I can choose to to deal less damage directly to the creatures themselves and have more damage go through. And I hope that made sense. Kind of a little bit more complicated. Um, another white deck. So another white deck. Oh, this is a life gain deck. Um, life gain, if they get enough steam, can overpower aggro. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to choose not to attack because I can, I can use his ability during my opponent's turn because it's a tap ability and destroy this if I need to. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and... Hmm, yeah, we'll just kill it. There we go. Let's see. I was going to say, did our opponent not draw land this turn? And that's kind of sometimes the risk. Maybe you have a hand where you've got a bunch of these one drops, as we call them. Things only cost one mana. And you're really hoping that you just draw into some more land. And sometimes it pays off, and sometimes it really does not. So we're going to go ahead and cast our Lava Runner. And then we're going to hold off on the Shock because it's an instant. Because I want to be able to either kill this, or when he attacks, deal one damage, and then kill it. And that might sound a little bit more complicated. We'll get over that once he actually decides to attack. Which I don't think he will. Um, we're going to go ahead and Shock this. I really don't want him to have lifelink, because the any amount of life gain I can prevent is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and deal 3 damage to this, because it kills that. And he has ability, if you have 2 more insert sorcery cards, he gets plus 1, plus 0. So 1 more power, so I can deal 2 damage instead of 1, which is really nice. So I took care of his blocker, and was able to deal 2 damage. Yeah, so this guy is a mono white uh, deck list, and he's looks like he's gaining or er, playing defenders as well as life gain, but not as much mm. life gain as I thought in the beginning. Let's see, what am I going to do here? How do I want to do this? That is a good question. It is a very good question. Now, this basically he can sacrifice this and give this indestructible for one turn. Indestructible means any amount of damage I can deal won't be enough to, to destroy it and make it go to the graveyard. So what I'm actually do? I'm just going to end turn. Pass the ball to his court and see what he does. See what he does. Because if I attacked, he could block. And normally, two, two damage to one toughness, two damage to two toughness, normally they both die. But he would be able to give this indestructible... Mm. And then kill this while that stays he alive. He also has four open mana. Open mana meaning that he has mana available to use. Do I dare block? That's the real question. Mm. I think I will. So this is blocking. So he chose to attack me, and I killed one blocker with just a spell. And then the other blocker, I blocked. Yes, that was a... Great word choice. Yeah. So what blocking did, instead of damage going to me, the damage went to the creature. So two damage went to his two toughness, and because he was a two two at that point, two damage went to his one toughness. And they both ended up dying. So we essentially just traded. Okay, what that did is it just basically removed it from the battlefield without sending it to the graveyard. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass, I'm not drawing any land that I need. At this point, we're kind of trying to play the removal game. So we, I said we're aggro, and normally we are. Right but now, we're more uh, removal and more counter. Removal. We're just going to kill that. Well, unless he has a response to it, which he might. Nope. All right. He only has one card in hand. There's my land. All right. So what am I going to do? 
shock light up the stage? That's what I'm thinking. So we shock him, so he loses life, so we can use spectacle. We're gonna go ahead and spectacle. Um, and I know some of these cards you probably really won't understand, and we will get into more of this um, later on. But just for now, we're kind of hoping that you'll understand just the basic concepts. Okay. All right. Interesting. That was that was really interesting. That was very interesting. <clears throat> so what was interesting is because he used a light up stage to draw a light up the stage to then draw another light up the stage. So that doesn't happen super often. There are only four light up the stages in um, his deck. So to have him draw all four like that is uh, pretty remarkable. One, two. I'm oh, sorry. I, was, I, meant you, I meant to say you drew three because you drawn three. Watch, she'll draw the fourth one here. Yep, right here. Oh no, it's never Ken. mind. That Steam Ken works for me. All right. So what's the opponent gonna do? I'm still trying to figure out what he's playing. Yeah, we're not gonna block. We're gonna take the three. See, the other thing about aggro means that typically we don't care too much about how much life we get hit or how much damage we take to our life because we're usually dealing enough damage quickly enough that it doesn't matter. Yes, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. I like giving good explanations. What are you gonna we'll do? see what you do. Gonna do. So this gives our opponent a choice. They can either take four damage or give us three cards. Like, not give us, but allow us to draw three cards, which actually I'm very excited that he took the four damage, because now I get to deal six more to him. And pump this up to a 4 4, which is really nice. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead. Did cast a spectacle, though? Or no, it's spectacle, it's. Um... No. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and attack. Now, so even if he chooses to block, this damage will not go through. So, unless a creature has the ability called Trample, all damage is absorbed by the creature. Even if, for say, it was a 100, 100, 100 power, 100 toughness against a 1 1, the 1 1 would absorb all of the damage and none of it would go through. Okay, that's fine to me. Next. So, now what I'm going to do is so now. That's I can an example of indestructible. Yeah. So, right now he has negative 3 toughness. But didn't do anything. Yep, and so what I did there, I removed his plus one, plus one counters, and because he took damage, it ended up killing him. Oh, now he's down to one. Now any burn spell I draw instantly kills him. So I'm a little confused what he did. Unless I draw land, yeah, shock, we win. So for me, now, and those are the kind of decisions you have to make. Hopefully... In his case, he was hoping the risk would pay off and I would just draw land for the next six turns. <laughs> but if it were me, I wouldn't have risked that because then any burn spell would have killed me. I was down to one life. So unless I had a ga way of gaining more life, that was a little ri bit risky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, that's what the card is for. It's risk factor because it allowed um, him to draw three more cards if it didn't take the damage. Yeah, less ris risky for me and more risky for my opponent. All right, so we're going to move on from aggro. Aggro, as we've stated before, a very fast-paced game, except for that last one. Um, but typically, we're just going for really quick hand drops into really quick beatdowns. We're going to move on and talk about the other three different styles, per se, of playing. Now, there's aggro, control, combo, and mid-range. Now the three big ones are aggro, control, and combo. That was aggro. Control essentially has a bunch of stuff that allows us to kill our opponent's creatures, control the game, until late game we can get out our big guns. That's what control wants. They want to last long enough so that like aggro fizzles out and then they can start dropping their, their money makers, their, their win conditions. Yeah, their giant high mana cost spells <clears throat> that can then typically end the game in a couple turns. And con and combo, excuse me, combo on the other hand, is just looking to survive until they find like three or four key pieces that really either make them win or make you so frustrated because of how long the game's taking that you just give up. Those are your two options. 
Um, and we will have some combo. It's a little bit more advanced, perhaps a little bit more technical. We'll explain combo a little bit better later on. We'll have some videos on it. It'll be great. They're also more difficult decks to build because you have to know how each of the card works and be able to build a deck that then works on synergies with each other to create a combo. Right, right. Um, and then the last one, mid-range, kind of like Control. They want to survive into the late game, but not quite as late as Control does. They want to start asserting their dominance by around turn 3 to 5, and then just start running off. So they play bigger cost spells than aggro does, but they still want to be faster than control. So they want to survive your aggro attack and then assert their dominance with bigger, more powerful spells a little bit later in the game that hopefully beats aggro and is too fast for control. Yeah, so let's play. Yeah, we're going to go through what's called controlling super friends. I'm going to just make sure real quick that we've got everything I'm looking for. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Okay. And we're not going to go over a ton of it. We're just going to kind of show you. I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to understand control is just to look at it. Mm -hmm. But basically, this deck has a bunch of Planeswalkers and a bunch of control spells. Now, remember, Planeswalkers are um, one of those card types. Planeswalkers are very unique. They're kind of similar to players. They have their own life total. They can increase their life total, per se. They have different abilities they can use that either add life, and I will explain that a little bit clearer, but they basically add life or take away life from them. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this, and then I will explain Planeswalkers, why our opponent does what our opponent does. So, we see in the bottom right corner the five. Five meaning five loyalty counters. If those loyalty counters go down to zero, Kazmina dies. Now, like an opponent, you can attack your opponent's Planeswalkers. Now, say that we had that Firebrand again, that one power, one toughness, and we attacked a Planeswalker with, say, I don't know, five loyalty, like Kazmina. We dealt one damage to it, then our Kazmina would take one damage and would drop one loyalty from five to four. That was an example of control. I'm not really playing any creatures, I'm just looking to destroy my opponent's creatures. Or spells or whatever it may be. Like this. So we're going to play this. Moan of Craving. It's going to get minus 2, minus 2, which drops its toughness below 0, and it dies. And then you gain 2 life. Yay! And I gain 2 life. So I like decks like this, where they're not playing I don't know what he's creatures. playing yet. He's playing Merfolk. Oh, okay. He just he named them both Marifold. See, and I've got a answer for that. I've too. got an answer for that too. Um, so the thing I'm about uh, Miscloaked Herald is that he is unblockable, meaning that if you had a creature on the battlefield, you still wouldn't be able to block him. He would go deal his damage directly to you. Now, one thing <clears> we <throat> didn't mention: if you do have a tapped creature, tapped creatures cannot block. Yes. So you can't attack and block with the same creature unless it has an ability that keeps it from tapping. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and destroy <laughs> that. Uh, this is this is control in its finest. So, Obnixilis is a very obnoxious card. I see what you did there. Yeah. Nah, very clever. So he's essentially got two abilities. One, you saw that he started off at five loyalty. I took two off and destroyed a creature. So now he's at three. So if Jade Light, Jade Bearer attacks Omnixilis, then it goes down to two loyalty. Which means I can still activate the ability, because you have to have the amount or greater of loyalty counters to be able to take them off. Right, I hope that so makes sense. at minimum, he has to have two loyalty on him in order for him to be able to use his minus two ability. If he had one, then he wouldn't be able to activate his minus two ability. Right, right. So I'm actually going to go ahead and blow that up. I don't know up. why he didn't attack you. Um, because he wanted to draw a card. Ah, okay. Because card advantage is a very big thing in this game. That might not be something you'll understand until you start playing, but the, the ability to draw more cards is incredible. 
And most of those uh, card advantages come from playing a blue deck, but not always. Not always, but most of them. Blue deals more with drawing cards than any other color of, of deck. All right. So, we'll so the uh, creature that was created from Vraska is a, a creature that has what's called Death Touch. Now, Death Touch means that when it either blocks or is blocked in turn, any amount of damage it deals to that opponent creature is enough to kill it. So remember our example of 100 power, 100 toughness creature attacking, and a 1 power, 1 toughness creature blocking. Well, obviously dealing 1 damage to 100 toughness isn't enough to destroy it, but if that creature had death touch, then it would be. So very close. And that's sometimes the problem with playing a three color deck is I have the black mana, I have the blue mana, I just don't have any red mana available yet, so I need to draw a mountain. Um, <clears throat> what do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and kill the river snake because it can't be blocked, which I really want to be able to block these things. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack. So even if he blocks, it will trade to toughness, normally be enough to block one, but at death touch. <laughs> and now he uses his other ability. It's great. And Vraska, whenever a creature controls death touch, deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a 1 1 counter on that creature. So this now is 2 power 2 for deafness. And if he keeps letting it through and keeps this alive, it'll grow more and more it'll powerful. It'll grow bigger and bigger. And even if he kills it, I've got another one. <laughs> so I hope he kills it, because I'm going to kill it myself. Which brings us to the legendary rule. If you cast a a legendary permanent with the same name as something already on the on your field um, then you have to sacrifice one you can't have two of the exact same legendary planeswalker so you can't have two of the the exact same Vraska swar swarms em eminence yes yeah I can read English Vraska swarms eminence so since it's a legendary that means that if he were to play for some reason Vraska swarms eminence onto the battlefield while his other one was already on there, he would have to choose which one he wants to keep on the battlefield. Right. I'm going to go ahead and play the other one. Because why not? Because why not? I'm going to all attack. I think he's going to block here and block here. I would do that. I think that will be okay because I can still block one of the others. Okay. Works for me. Straight trade. Good trades. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't tap it, because it might scare him into not attacking. But who knows? Who knows the mind of the opponent player? No one! Although I will say I like his avatar. Or yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's lovely. Alright. Critical error. <laughs> I like it. That's a, cool, that's a good name. That's because I like watching Critical Role. So. Don't even know that is. That's okay. You don't need to. It's a time waster. Honestly. Okay, I'm glad to know. Yeah. Ooh. Let's just say it takes about four hours per video that they have. That's too long. It's, it's really long, yeah. Well, they want your Frasca dead. They really do. They want it deader than dead. They want it so dead. Yes. Yes, they do. So I'm going to go ahead and probably block this mare folk. And I'm assuming because it has sex food? Yes. So what hexproof is is it means that whenever you cast, you know, one of those instant or sorcery spells, it cannot target a creature or you that has hexproof. Right. So if I uh, so say my cry of carnarium, um, target creature gets minus two, minus moment two. Moment of craving. I... Your carnarium is a different card. Sorry, I apologize for that moment of uh, craving. Yes, <laughs> craving. <laughs> Yes, it means well, I wouldn't be able to cast. I wouldn't be able to target these because it's an illegal target. It can't be targeted. But I could still target like Mystical Herald. And there, I was hoping to draw like another swamp, and then be able to discard something else, or even a mountain would have been nice. They really want Casmina dead. All right, we are going to probably wow choose blockers. Block there. Oof. All right. 
I don't know if there's really anything that will save me. Yeah, I don't know if you have any answers at this point. His army's too big. Ugin think Having Ugin down. Because it creates me a blocker and they probably want to destroy this. Oh, that was really helpful. So what he does, exile the top card of your library face down, so my opponent can't see that, doesn't know it's island, but I know it's an island. Um, and then when that token leaves the battlefield, I get the card. Oh wow, I think I'm just dead. I think One, two, are. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, just ten. But he's going to target this with five of that, so he allowed me to live a couple more turns. Seven, eight? No, I think seven of them are attacking it. Seven? Seven damage. Wow, he really wants it dead. Hey, I might actually survive this. Who knows? Hey, you drew a mountain. Yep, which is exactly what I needed. Play that. My opponent has to discard that card. And I'm just going to right now get rid of that. Gain a couple life. That was really lovely. Yes, lovely. Lovely. So Sending I don't think I'm dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I'm just See? nearly dead. That's the thing. It doesn't matter if you win with 1 health or 100 health. As long as you get your opponent down to 0 or the other win condition is you get their library down to 0 and they can't draw any more cards. So if one of those two happens, it doesn't matter what your life total is. You can... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm very dead. We're dead. So very, very dead. So he's an ability which essentially turns into a Planeswalker. If you haven't noticed, Planeswalkers are... A lot of fun to use. Um, and his negative 12 ability, his minus 12 is amazing. Might as well just. But. Wow. No, it's a minute zero. My. Let's see. Your graveyard. Oh, <laughs> that might be enough. No, it's not going to be enough. Actually, it might be. Because he has an ability whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, you control each dragon, you control this one damage to that creature, so all of those die. The only one that goes through is this. They all die. Wow. See, like I said, it does It's not, not over until it's over. Or until you can see. Yeah, or until you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and block with this because I want this to die. So I can draw. Nice. Okay, that was beautiful actually. That really did save me. I'm very surprised, to be honest. I, so am I. Draw two cards. Nice. We will... Think, I don't think they're going to have any haste, so we might be okay. Wow. And he won! And we won! Wow. All right. And he won with one health, Oh my goodness. One life. See, and that's exactly... It, the game just wanted to make his point very, very clear. <laughs> it's not over until it's over. So, let the cards fall where they may. Don't concede unless you really are just tired of watching your opponent, like, mill you out or something. That's your choice. But, moral of the story, it's not over until it is over. Yeah, I think that's all I've got to say. Yeah, I think that's it. So, it has been super fun to be able to play this and explain a little bit of stuff for you. Hope that that was helpful. Please continue watching. Like, subscribe, ring that bell, do all the good stuff. All the good stuff. Last thing, this has been a lot of fun. Love you guys. Go ahead and watch our other video. Now, these videos, we try to pack as much as we can into, but we're also still trying to win, so sometimes things slip our memory, but they don't slip our memory in our professionally done and awesome videos that you are going to go ahead and watch because you want to get better at playing Magic. Yep. So, I'm Bronze. I'm Zinc. And this is Bronze Inc. Inc.